Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering appendicitis. This is going to be a quick video. I'm getting straight to the point. I'm going to cover the most important things that you need to know. So before we get started, as always, I'm gonna ask you to support this channel by liking this video by subscribing to this channel if you haven't done so already, by engaging with me in the comments to help my algorithm. Engage with me in comments. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see me cover or if there's more of this or something else that you'd like to see me cover, let me know. Uh, don't forget I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you can catch me almost every single day covering different types of questions on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So guys, let's get started. Take a look at what says appendicitis. Look what I wrote right next to appendicitis, emergency. The minute that you hear that word appendicitis, you need to think of medical emergency. And I'm going to explain why in a second. So it says appendicitis, this is inflammation of the appendix, which is a narrow blind tube that extends from the inferior part of the cecum. As, as you can see, this lower part of the cecum, which is part of that large intestine, look at this little I call it pocket, but just this little tack right here, right? That is appendix. So what happens is that appendix gets inflamed. It gets infected. And so the blood flow to that area either decreased or it stops. So it causes the tissue in that area to basically die off. It becomes gangrenous, which is a big problem because it may rupture. Well, Professor D, what's the problem if it ruptures? What do you think is inside of the um, appendix? Fecal matter? So if that bad boy ruptures, you now have fecal matter in what's supposed to be a sterile environment. Okay, peritonitis, that's another video. I promise I'm gonna make a video on it, but I just want you to understand the possible complications and implications of appendicitis and why you need to consider it a medical emergency. All right, so let's keep going. So it extends from the inferior part of the cecum. It is the most common reason for emergency abdominal surgery. A common cause of appendicitis is obstruction of the lumen by a fecal lift. That's basically just a piece of fecal matter. Um, clinical manifestations. Appendicitis typically begins, and guys, you absolutely need to know this because for testing purposes, when it comes to appendicitis, you're usually gonna be asked about um, those clinical manifestations of signs and symptoms. It's usually gonna be a select all that applies, or you're going to be asked about your priority nursing interventions, or what's the third one? Signs and symptoms, nursing interventions. I don't remember what the third one is. Oh, come to me. Let's keep going. Anyway, let's look at the signs and symptoms. Appendicitis uh, typically begins. With, oh, I know, I know. <laughs> signs and symptoms, nursing interventions, and priority. So what they'll do is they'll give you a list of patients and say, which one would you run to first? And so basically they will give you those clinical manifestations, which you have to recognize as suspecting appendicitis and that's who you'd run to first because again remember medical emergency all right so let's keep going appendicitis typically begins with dull peri umbilical pain followed by anorexia they won't want to eat nausea and vomiting look at this the pain is persistent and continuous let's stop there for a second if you watch the video i made already on um I forget the title of it, but it was basically a video on how to answer test questions if you have no clue what that answer is, right? And on that video, I talked about certain clues to look for. And you see that word persistent? That is one of those clues that lets you know this is a priority. This is a patient we need to be running to. Let me tell you what that word persistent means. That means that something's going on with the patient. And we've done a nursing intervention that evidence-based practice has shown us, okay, this patient should be feeling better. They should get better, but they didn't. Uh-oh, something's wrong because this is persistent. What's going on, okay? So look what it says. The pain is persistent and continuous, eventually shifting to the right lower quadrant and uh, localizing at McBurney's point. This is very important. That right lower quadrant, you need to know that for appendicitis. McBurney's point, which is halfway between the umbilicus and the right iliac crest, you also need to know that for appendicitis. I did a TikTok video on that. Make sure you guys catch it. 
A low grade fever can develop. They're gonna have a localized tenderness. Rigidity, that is another word for testing I see over and over again. You need to know that. So somebody um, who normally, you know, we all have, you know, a little, unless, you know, they work out every single day, you know, they have low fat in the abdominal area, right? You know, their the abdominal area is not going to be, you know, hard as a table or what's that thing that people, um, they, they surfboard, right? But this patient, all of a sudden, the abdomen is as it's rigid, it's hard, it's stiff. Uh-oh rebound tenderness so you palpate the abdomen as soon as you lift your hand ow that's what rebound tenderness is okay rebound tenderness muscle guarding they are guarding that abdomen they don't want you to go anywhere near it because it's so painful to them coughing sneezing and deep inhalation makes the pain worse the patient usually prefers to lie still often with the right leg flexed so this is that like, you know how when the patient has uh, kidney stones, those stones are so bad, they're doing the kidney stone dance, they're moving all over the place because they're trying to get a comfortable position. It's so painful, not in appendicitis. It's the opposite. That pain is so bad, they're not trying to move at all. They stay in one place, often with the right leg flexed. Because, and remember guys, that pain is where? In the right lower quadrant. Make sure you remember that. All right, diagnostic studies. The CT scan, that is the preferred diagnostic procedure, but sometimes they might do ultrasound or even MRI. If there's a delay in diagnosis and treatment, look at this, the appendix can rupture and the resulting peritonitis can be fatal, as in deadly, as in lethal. That's why it's so important. And that's why when it comes to appendicitis, that's usually going to be one of your test questions, those clinical manifestations, because you have to be able to recognize it early before it ruptures and turns into peritonitis, okay? The treatment of appendicitis, uh, I can't speak. The treatment of appendicitis is an immediate appendectomy, which is surgical removal of the appendix. We cannot take any chance because this bad boy right here, it's inflamed. It's painful to the patient, but God forbid if it ruptures. All right. So the minute we realize that patient has appendicitis, they are going into the OR immediately to get that appendix removed. Antibiotics and fluid resuscitation are started. Look at this before surgery. Before surgery, we give them antibiotics because again, look at this thing. What's inside of here? Fecal matter. We're about to do surgery to remove it. We need to make sure that that patient does not become septic. So we start giving them antibiotics and we start giving them fluids before they even go into surgery. Nursing management. Uh, managing the patient presenting with manifestations of appendicitis focuses on preventing fluid volume deficit, relieving pain, and preventing complications such as peritonitis, such as sepsis. To ensure the stomach's empty in case of uh, in case surgery is needed, keep the patient NPO until the healthcare provider evaluates the patient. And guys, that's a rule of thumb, not only for appendicitis, for everything. If you suspect that that patient will have to go into surgery anytime soon, they need to be NPO. You're going to do vital signs. Again, you're going to give them IV fluids because we can't afford for um, that patient to go in fluid, uh, a fluid deficit. You're going to give them analgesics for the pain, antiemetics for the vomiting. Ambulation begins a few hours after surgery. Let me stop right there before I keep going. Remember, after surgery, it's painful. Patient's not going to want to get up. They're not going to want to move. But we know what can happen if a patient doesn't ambulate and move around after surgery. They can develop a DVT. That thrombus can float and move and go to the lungs and turn into a pulmonary embolism, right? That patient can get pneumonia. There's so many things that can go wrong if the patient doesn't um, walk. So yes, we're going to medicate the patient, give them analgesics, but they still have to do what they have to do. And that is your difference, guys, between sympathy and empathy. A sympathetic nurse says, oh, I know you're in so much pain, so you just stay in bed. But an empathy 
empathetic nurse knows that yes, you're in pain, so I have to medicate you, but you still have to walk because you'll be worse off if you don't. Okay, so ambulation begins a few hours after surgery, not even the next day, a few hours after surgery and the diet is advanced as tolerated. So they're going to start with clear li liquids and then we move that patient up. Guys, that's your appendicitis in a nutshell. Appendicitis is not as hard as many students make it out to be. That's your appendicitis in a nutshell. I have peritonitis coming soon for you. So watch out for that. I just can't do it on this video because I got to get going. But let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like to see more of. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Thank you for watching and you guys will catch me on the next video.